GoPro action cameras are one of my favorite cameras to use for creating night lapses. This is because they're small, they're portable, they're waterproof, and they're relatively easy to use. In this video, I'm going to provide to you an extensive, detailed, complete guide that will explain to you 100% of my GoPro night lapse process from A to Z. I'm going to show you every detail that I do from setup to site location to best settings to editing. I'm going to show you all of those details today so that you can have a complete 100% guide to my entire GoPro night lapse process. Now, whether this is your first time doing a GoPro night lapse or your hundredth time, I feel like my guide today is going to have something for you. So today's guide, I'm going to divide into four main sections. The first section I'm gonna cover is tools. The second section is setup. The third section is settings. And the fourth section is editing. Let's get started. So there are five things that you need in order to create a GoPro night lapse. The first item you'll need, of course, is a GoPro. For the purpose of today's video, I'm going to be using the GoPro Hero 10 for demonstrations. But any GoPro that you have from the Hero 4 or newer, most of these settings will apply to that. The second thing you'll want to have is you'll want to have this USB pass-through door. Now this door will apply directly if you have a Hero 9 or Hero 10. If you have a GoPro model that's older than the 9 or 10, you're going to most likely want to put your GoPro in a cage. And the reason for this USB pass-through door is this allows you to power your GoPro with an external battery pack, which you'll of course want if you're gonna have your GoPro set up all night doing a night lapse. The GoPro battery is not going to last all night for you. At most, it's going to last two to three hours before it dies. So you're gonna want your GoPro hooked up to an external power pack. But the problem is if you hook it up into the USB-C port with the door open, it exposes your GoPro to moisture. So if it rains during the night, if it snows, if there's a heavy dew, your GoPro could get damaged internally. So the USB pass-through door allows you to plug in the USB-C cable right here without exposing the internals of your GoPro to the elements. Now, the third thing you'll need is you'll need an external power pack. The one that I recommend is this one from Anchor. And the reason for that is it provides a lot of power for the price. Now, all the tools I'm showing you today, I have linked in the description below so that you can check out the exact ones that I use. This Anchor one right here I really like because it works well with the GoPros. It doesn't create some of those issues that some of the other external packs do where the GoPro won't power on or this won't power them. This Anchor one powers the GoPro great. I have had my GoPro hooked up to this running for three days continuously doing a night lapse and there was still some power left on this. So this fully charged definitely provides plenty of power for you to do a night lapse. And even if you only have this a quarter or halfway powered, it'll definitely be more than enough for one night. And of course, you'll want the USB-C cable that comes with this power pack so that you can plug it into your GoPro and power it. The fourth item you're gonna need is a tripod. Now, it does not have to be a fancy tripod. This one right here, I got on Amazon for about $20 and it works great. It does not have to be fancy at all, but you do need a tripod with a mounting plate that you can put a GoPro mount onto. So this particular GoPro mount that I have is made of metal. It holds up really well, I really like it. It was about $10 on Amazon. I've linked to this in the description below if you wanna check it out. The plastic mounts will do as well, but what I've noticed is if I do too much of this with the plastic ones, they wear out pretty quickly over time. So I recommend getting one of these metal ones if you find yourself connecting your GoPro to a tripod often. And the last thing you'll need is a micro SD card. Now this particular card I have here from SanDisk is a 512 gigabyte card. You do not need to have a card that big, but you will want to have a card that's at least 64 gigabytes in size for a night lapse. Otherwise, you may run out of space in that card and it would be frustrating to come back to your card and find that you only got part of the night lapse. So now that we've talked about the tools you need, let's get into the setup section next. So the first element of setup that you want to figure out is where will you be filming your GoPro night lapse? So if your goal is to capture a lot of celestial objects, including stars or the Milky Way, you're gonna want the darkest location possible. If your night lapse goal is to capture urban lights and like bridges and buildings in the night sky in a city, then you'll want a location that has a great vantage point of that city. So what you wanna capture is going to determine the location that you want to select. In this case, I'm going to assume that most of you want to capture a great view of the stars and or the Milky Way. So in order to do that, you're going to want a reasonably dark location. 
And the great thing is you don't have to guess on that. There's some great websites out there, two in particular that I'm going to mention today, that will help you find a great site location for your GoPro night lapse. Darksky.org and DarkSightFinder.com are the two websites that I recommend checking out to find a great place to do a GoPro night lapse. Now the first website, DarkSky.org, will have a listing of certified Dark Sky locations in your area. So if you go and look at the map, you can look and see which locations nearby meet that threshold. A lot of times you're gonna find that these are state parks or national parks, basically places that are far away from any major urban areas and do not have any man-made light pollution interfering with them. Generally, most people will have at least one of these locations within approximately an hour of where they live. And darksightfinder.com is a great place to check if your exact location meets the criteria. So the criteria is not set in stone as far as what constitutes a good dark sky and what doesn't. But generally, if your location is dark yellow or darker, so if it's dark yellow, light green, dark green, blue, or purple, you're probably going to be able to get a pretty good night lapse of stars and the Milky Way in the sky. If you're anything less than dark yellow, like light yellow, orange, or red, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get a night lapse. It doesn't mean it'll be impossible, but what you'll find is you'll be able to capture some of the brightest stars and planets or the moon, but you won't be able to see some of those more faint features such as the Milky Way or some of those less bright stars. So what I recommend if you want to get a good view of the night sky and you live in a location that's light yellow, orange, or red, I recommend finding a friend or a location that's in that dark yellow or darker. It's gonna make your night lapse a lot better. And if you look at that map of the entire US, there are plenty of areas that are dark yellow, green, blue, or purple. Most people have one of these within approximately half an hour of where they live. Now, once you've selected a tentative location or locations, I do recommend checking those out in the daytime if it's your first time filming a night lapse there. The daytime is going to allow you to look around and kind of pick out an exact site. So at that location, you may want some type of object in the foreground, and you also may want to select a specific place where you want to set that up. Generally, you're gonna want your tripod and your camera in a place that's not publicly accessible, because if you're leaving it there all night, somebody could walk off with it. And I don't recommend leaving it unless you're on private property or someplace where you're camping out, like in the woods, and you've got it right there near your tent. I don't recommend leaving it otherwise, like at a state park, in a public place, along a road or a parking lot, because you might come back in the morning and find that it's gone. And you don't want that to happen to your GoPro or your equipment. So when I do my night lapses, I do a combination of filming them on private property, sometimes that of a friend or family member, and then I sometimes do it with it pitched outside my tent, like if I'm backpacking or camping in the woods. Those are all great options that I have found work well. So once you have that site selected, it's time to set up your tripod and your other equipment. Now I recommend doing this setup, allowing yourself at least an hour or so to get everything in place before it gets dark. You don't wanna be fumbling and trying to set it up in the dark with a light. It can be very difficult to do. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your tripod set up. So we're gonna extend our tripod here. And you of course do not have to do this to the full height. You can keep it short like this. If it's windy or even a little bit breezy, you may want to keep it as short as possible because the wind is less likely to knock it over. That's a helpful tip if you're filming on a windy night. Once you have your tripod set up here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your GoPro mount connected to the mounting plate. Once you have your GoPro mount on, you're gonna to wanna to mount your GoPro on it. And of course, make sure you have your USB pass-through door or case on your GoPro before mounting it. And you can leave the battery in your GoPro. When you're using the external battery pack, it's not going to care if you have the battery in there or not, as long as you're using the one that I have from Anchor. If you're using a different brand, you may have to remove the battery to power the GoPro. But do keep in mind that if your cable becomes loose or disconnected in the night, your GoPro will cut off instantly if you don't have a battery in there. In the case of this Anchor one, if you have the battery in here, it's going to charge that battery to 100% first, and then it's going to continuously power it. So if your Anchor external battery pack ran out of power in the night, or if the cable became disconnected, your GoPro would still keep going for a couple hours. That's another reason I recommend that power pack, is it's going to set you up for success. 
We're gonna get our GoPro connected here. After you have your GoPro connected, you're going to want to connect to the external power pack. All you have to do is plug this into the USB-C port. Make sure your cable's connected here as well. And then what I love about this specific tripod is it's got this handle right here. So what you can do is you can slide this in here and it's gonna stay in place really well. Now you don't have to use this specific tripod that I use, you can use a different one. But if you don't have this handle here, I recommend using some rubber bands or some bungee cords to hold this power pack in place. Because if this slips and falls, more than likely the cable here is gonna become disconnected or it's gonna rip it off the GoPro. And it could damage your GoPro. You don't want that to happen. So make sure to secure this on your tripod, whether that be in the handle here or whether you use rubber bands or bungee cords. So once you have everything set up, you're ready to start filming your night lapse. Now there is a certain art to creating a night lapse. And one of those elements is how you place your camera. So what I mean by that is generally you're going to want some type of foreground object in your night lapse. That helps give context to the night lapse and what's happening. So in some cases that could be a mountain horizon. In other cases, you may have your camera pointed up at the sky underneath a tree, and you may have part of that tree in your frame. Now, when you do that, I recommend not having any more than approximately one quarter to one third of your frame taken up by your foreground object. That's because you want plenty of perspective of the sky in your night lapse. You know, you wanna be capturing mostly stars and the Milky Way. But when you have that foreground object or some other type of object that's in part of your frame, it helps show the rotation of the stars much better and it looks a lot better. Now, in the case of this site here today, I have plenty of trees around me, but mostly open sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the GoPro pointing upwards here, and I'm gonna have a little bit of one of these trees in one side. You'll see that more so when we capture this night lapse and we edit the photos as to how I set it up. So in the next section of this video, I'm going to run through the basic best settings that I recommend to capture an amazing night lapse. Now these best settings, you're likely going to want to program into your GoPro before you get out in the field. And the great thing is once you've programmed those settings into your GoPro, they'll be there ready for you to use as soon as you power on your GoPro. So the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to navigate to time-lapse mode. And when we're in time-lapse mode, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in night-lapse mode specifically down here at the bottom. Once we're in night-lapse mode, we're gonna click on that and we're going to go right here where it says night lapse. You're gonna click on the pencil icon to the right. And once we're in this mode, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your format is set to photo. Now you can do a video night lapse, but I strongly encourage you to do a photo night lapse. You're going to get a lot better results in the photo mode versus the video mode. And you're going to have a lot more flexibility later on when editing. I am going to show you the best settings for video mode today. But again, I strongly recommend using the photo mode. So we're gonna start with photo mode first. After you have format a photo, you're gonna next wanna set interval of auto. For shutter speed, if you have a fully dark sky, you're gonna to wanna to have that at 30 seconds. If it's a full moon, I recommend having 15 seconds. If it's a half moon or something close to a half moon, I recommend 20 seconds. For output, you definitely want to have raw. RAW is gonna be those .gpr GoPro photos, and those are gonna give you a lot more flexibility when editing later on. And you will also get the JPEG side by side, but the RAW photos preserve the full amount of data in them, and you can really bring that out during the editing process later on. Scheduled capture, you'll wanna keep that off. EV comp will not apply in this mode. For the white balance, I recommend having that at 3200K or 4000K but 3200K is my favorite for night lapses, and you can always change this when you're editing later on, but do make sure to set it to a value, don't keep it at auto. The ISO min and max are two of the most important settings, and those are gonna depend on where you are filming. So if you're filming in an area that has that dark yellow or further up on the scale, like green, blue, or purple, you're gonna to wanna to have the ISO min and max most of the time set to 800. If it's a really, really dark sky, you could do 1600. But the problem with 1600 that I've seen on a lot of GoPros is you start to get hot pixels. And hot pixels are those random blue, red, or other pixels that you can tell are just dead pixels in there. When the stars are moving, you can see these stationary objects in your 
time lapse, and those don't look good. So generally, I have found that if you keep the ISO min and max set to 800, you have a lot less hot pixels or no hot pixels at all. So even with a fully dark sky, you can use 1600 for the ISO min and max, but I recommend doing 800. And the trade-off is you just have to brighten those photos a little bit more later on when editing. But generally, those have all the detail preserved, and you can bring that out. Now, if you are in an urban area where there's a decent amount of light and you're like a light yellow, orange, or red on that scale on the map, then I recommend keeping this set to no higher than 800 and probably even 400 is going to work for you for the night lapse. For sharpness, you wanna keep this at low and color, you wanna keep that at flat. And the shortcuts down here will not apply. You do not need to touch any of those for a night lapse. So next thing I'm gonna show you is the video mode in case you want to use it. So for the video mode, you're gonna change format here from photo to video. And for resolution, I recommend doing the 4K or the 4K 4x3. If you do the 4K, it's gonna be the 16x9 resolution. It's gonna be ready for you to export and share. But if you do the 4K 4x3, it's gonna give you a little more cropping flexibility for your finished product. So either one is fine. But in general, if you're gonna do the video mode, you're probably gonna to wanna to stick with the 4K. For the lens, I recommend selecting wide. Wide is going to give you the most perspective in view, and you can always remove that fisheye later on if you desire to do so. For format, it's of course gonna be video. Interval, you wanna keep it at auto. Shutter, you're gonna to wanna to set that to 30 seconds if it's a really dark sky. And then if you have the full moon, or at least a partial moon, you're probably gonna to wanna to do 15 to 20 seconds. So if you're filming roads, bridges, buildings in a big city and showing how the lighting changes overnight, video mode is probably gonna work for you because you're gonna have a lot lower shutter here of probably a couple seconds, and that's gonna work pretty well. For scheduled capture, that will not apply here. You can keep that set to off. For duration, you want no limit. For timer, you can turn that to off. For zoom, you can keep that at 1x. You do not want to do any zoom on this camera as it would be digital zoom, and it will reduce the quality of your video. The protein settings are going to matter most on your video night lapse. For bit rate, you definitely wanna make sure that's set to high. You wanna get the highest quality product. For EV comp, that's going to not apply. For white balance, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to set that down to 3200K. For ISO min and max, the same rules are gonna apply as with the photo mode. If you have a really, really dark sky, you could do 1600, but you risk hot pixels. So I recommend doing 800 for the min and 800 for the max. For sharpness, you could set this to low or medium, but I do recommend low. Low gives you the best results with night lapses, and you can always add some sharpness back later on when editing. For color, I recommend doing either natural or flat. Flat's gonna give you a little more flexibility to add colors back and saturation when you're editing. And the shortcuts down here will not apply. All right, so now that it's getting close to dark, we need to get our GoPro and tripod set up out here and get that night lapse rolling. So for tonight's night lapse, we're gonna have that camera pointing straight up and down. That lens is gonna be pointed straight to the sky. We of course wanna make sure we've cleaned it off first. We've got it all plugged in. We're gonna double check. Recommend checking to make sure the charging symbol's lit up there. That means we've plugged it in. When we get it in position, we're gonna make sure that thumb screw is nice and tight. We're gonna make sure the tripod is nice and sturdy. We've got our external battery pack right here. And I've got the tripod on the shortest mode it can go on because there is a little bit of a breeze today and I wanna have that where it's not gonna fall over. So once we have everything to go, we're gonna look above, make sure we have the setting that we want, which we do. 
And we're of course gonna get down underneath here and make sure the perspective that we're seeing is what we like. We've got everything set in the frame as we like it. Then we're gonna hit, start the time lapse going. So every 30 seconds tonight, that GoPro is gonna take one individual raw and JPEG photo at the same time. Then it's gonna go another 30 seconds collecting all of the info. It's gonna take another shot. All right, it's morning time now. We're gonna get down here and we're gonna cut this off. When you hit the record button, it's gonna keep going until the last photo reaches zero, and then it's gonna stop. All right, so now that we filmed our night lapse, we need to get our GoPro connected to our computer, and we need to copy those files to our computer so that we can edit them. Now, if you did do the video mode night lapse, I'm gonna show you those settings next. First, we're gonna do the photo mode, and I'm gonna show you how to edit those raw photos and create a night lapse from those. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna plug in our GoPro using the USB to USB-C cable. Once we plug it in, we wanna power it on. And once we've powered it on, we should see it pop up on our computer here in a moment. So in today's case, I'm using an Apple computer to demonstrate this, but the steps are all going to be the same, whether you're using Windows or Apple, except for the part where you navigate to find your files at the beginning. It's going to look a little bit different, of course, on Windows versus Mac OS. Now, if you find your computer tends to be buggy when you plug in your GoPro via the USB-C cable, then I recommend one of these right here. This is a USB adapter that has both SD and micro SD slots on it. And I like to use this personally because I can connect this into my Apple computer, my Windows computer, and it works each time, every time. So for today's video, I'm going to show you that as well. So if we go that route, we're gonna take the micro SD card out of the GoPro. We're gonna plug it into the USB drive right here. And then we're gonna hook this up to the computer. After we've plugged it in, we're gonna see the drive show up here. So it's gonna be called Untitled and I'm going to navigate to this DCIM folder. So I've got a couple different night lapses on here, and what I'm gonna do is I wanna do the one that I did most recently, which is the demonstration that I showed you. So where it says search here, we're gonna do .gpr, and we're gonna click on DCIM. That way it shows just what's on this drive. So the night lapse that I did, it went from the night of August 1st to August 2nd. So we are gonna want all of the GPR files, which GPR is the raw files. We're gonna to wanna to copy the ones from when it ended to when it started. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag down here and I'm gonna go all the way back to August 1st when I started this one, which was at eight o'clock. I'm gonna right click, we're gonna click copy and we're gonna make a new folder here on the desktop. We're gonna call it Night Lapse 1. And then we're gonna right click on this folder. We're gonna click Paste. And all the files are going to paste into that folder. And there's about 16 gigabytes of files. So like I said, 64 gigabytes is generally the size I recommend for micro SD card. That gives you a little bit of leeway in case you have some other files on there. This one, you have to remember, these are only the raw files. So if we had the JPEG file size totaled into this too, it would be pretty close to 32 gigabytes. But 64 gives you that extra buffer room in case you have other files on there or in case you're doing a particularly long night lapse or time lapse. And if you consider if we had the interval of 15 seconds, it would have been twice the amount of photos versus the 30 second interval we had. So if we had done that, then the file size would have been approximately 33 gigabytes. So 64 gigabytes at minimum is what I recommend for your micro SD card. So these files are gonna finish copying here fairly quickly. And then once they finish copying, we're gonna to go to the next step. All right, so our files are almost finished copying here. They're gonna be done in a moment here. All right, now that they finished copying, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna open Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, I strongly encourage you to use Lightroom Classic. 
The principles of editing that I'm going to show you, you can use in any photo editing software that has those options. Lightroom Classic is very friendly to anybody who wants to edit time-lapse photos. It makes it super easy and it saves you a lot of time. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Lightroom Classic. If you decide to use something else, like I said, a lot of these settings will still apply, but there's obviously going to be different steps if you don't use Lightroom Classic. So once Adobe Lightroom Classic opens, we're going to go up here to File and we're going to select Import Photos and Video. And we're going to navigate to our folder right here on the desktop. And we're going to make sure all 1,303 photos are selected. And then we're going to click Import. So as you'll see here, like I mentioned earlier, the first several photos are going to be fully white. And that's because there was daylight going on after sunset and before it got fully dark. And when you have a shutter speed set to 30 seconds, it's going to capture any light that's there. And that much light is going to overwhelm the sensor. And then of course, as these previews load, we will see a bunch of photos at the end of the night lapse that are white as well. So what I recommend doing is I recommend deleting a bunch of these white ones. Uh, typically, as you start to load out, look, and as you can see, photo 90 here, 89 and 90, start to show some definition of what's in the frame. So what I like to do is I like to usually delete up to a couple photos before that. I like to leave a little bit of buffer for the intro and the outro, but not too much. And we have a bunch of white ones at the end too. So if you look here like around 1008, there's still some little bit of definition of that tree. So just like with the intro, I want to leave a little bit of outro. So I'm going to click on 1021, hold down shift. Then I'm going to go all the way to the end, 1218. Select that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click remove photos and I'm going to remove from Lightroom. So now we have a good approximate thousand photos that we can work with for the night lapse. So now that these are importing and we're just loading the previews, for the editing process, we want to select one that's near the middle because we kind of want average lighting for the night lapse. So I'm going to go down here and since it's about a thousand photos, I'm going to select right here around 500. I'm going to double click and that's going to load our main photo. So it's going to give the loading down here because the initial preview had not loaded yet for that photo. Now it's important to note that the photos you get for your night lapse, they're initially going to look pretty dark. And you're probably going to think, oh no, I did something wrong. Uh, why didn't this work? He gave me all the settings. Why did mine come out like this? Don't panic. That is normal because there's a lot of detail that's preserved in here that you just can't see. We have to bring out that detail from the raw photo. So what I'm going to do to make this a little easier to show you all the settings is I'm going to load one of my presets. So I have a save preset for any time I do a night lapse that has ISO of 800 and shutter speed of 30, which this night lapse was. So watch what happens when I click on this preset. It's going to apply and you're going to see a big difference in a moment. Look at that. Look at all the detail that was there in that photo that we couldn't see until it was brought out. So now that I've applied that preset, I'm going to show you under the develop tab, all of the settings that I changed for this. So first of all, the temp and tint settings I left alone because I had my white balance set to 3200 and I like it that way. The exposure, I brought it up to 0.75. The contrast, I left at zero. The highlights, I did about plus 30. The shadows, I did plus five. The whites, I had about plus 30 there. It's 31 to be exact. The blacks, I brought it up ever so slightly to plus two. Under the presence settings, the only change I made was clarity. I brought that up to plus 10. Tone curve, I did not change anything under that. That's all of the default settings. Under the HSL color tab, if you click on saturation, you can see some of the colors I brought out a little bit here. So for this particular night lapse, I brought orange, yellow, and green all up to around about 30. Uh, Cause I like how that works with the colors here. I really like that a lot. The aqua, I left that alone, and the blue, I left it alone. The sky already has a lot of those colors in it, and it doesn't really do anything for the night lapse to bring out more of those. And then the purple and the magenta, I brought up to about plus 40 on both of those, because as you'll see when we move this along, a lot of those Milky Way colors are more of that magenta and purple, and I really like how that looks to bring those out. The color grading, I didn't do anything under that tab. The detail tab is a pretty important one. 
So under that one, I brought the sharpening way up. So if you remember, for our, for our sharp settings, we did this on low. So low is the lowest sharpening. And the nice thing is you can bring out a lot of that detail. And in this case, bringing up the sharpening really helps enhance a lot of these stars and details in this night lapse. And then the radius, I drag this over to about two here. I, I find that tends to work best for night lapses. For the detail for this one, I brought it to about 50. The masking, I have that at zero. For the noise reduction, this is a particularly important setting. So for noise reduction, we wanna bring this way up. It makes a huge difference. It smooths it out really nicely. The detail, I have that about 63. I like it for this particular one. And that tends to work best for any where I do the ISO of 800 and the shutter speed of 30 seconds. Cause that's typically gonna be a fully dark sky. Contrast, I bring that up just a little bit to about 16. And then for noise reduction for color, same thing, bring it all the way up to 100. If it wasn't at 100, it's gonna look really bad there as well. So bring that up to 100. And for the detail, I usually want that about middle of the road for color, uh, somewhere around 50. And then smoothness, we want that up to 100. We want it nice and smooth. And then down here on the lens correction, I like to select the remove chromatic aberration and then I select enable profile correction. When you select enable profile correction, it corrects the lens setting. So I had it on wide, it makes it a lot better. There's less of that fisheye. When you click it, it auto corrects it. Now the default setting for this is distortion would be here at 100, but I find that that crops my frame a little too much. So I typically bring it down to about 60. So there is still gonna be a little bit of fisheye there, but for night lapse, that's not really a big deal. That looks pretty good as a night lapse. So I'm gonna keep it there. And those are the settings that I change on each of these photos. All right, so after we've applied that to one photo, it's kind of neat to look at the photos on each side of that to see just how much of a difference that makes. It's huge. So this is the big key where Lightroom saves us a lot of time. You wanna hit Command A in the case of Mac or Control A in the case of Windows. And what you'll see is it selects all of the photos down here in your timeline. And you wanna right click on the photo that you edited, which in this case is number 500 on our photos here. And you wanna right click and go to Develop Settings and select Sync Settings. It's gonna show you all of the settings that you could have possibly changed on here. And you're gonna click Check All. It's gonna select all of these and then you're going to synchronize. And when you synchronize up here, it's gonna say pasting settings. It'll go pretty quickly. And then what it's going to do is it's gonna take all of the settings you changed on this one photo and it's gonna apply them to all of the photos in your night lapse. That saves so much time and it works great in Lightroom Classic. What we wanna do is we wanna export the night lapse photos. For the image format, you wanna make sure it's JPEG. Color space, you wanna make sure it's sRGB. Quality, you wanna make sure it's set all the way to 100. Once you've applied all those settings, you're gonna click export. And it's gonna say preparing to export. Now generally at this point, I recommend going and brewing yourself a coffee or doing something else, cause it's gonna take a while. So I'm not gonna keep this recording. I'm gonna let this export finish and I will resume as soon as it's done. All right, so now that our photos have finished exporting, we're gonna go on to the next stage. And the next stage involves putting those individual photos into a video editing program and then exporting your finished product. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use Adobe Premiere Pro. And I like Adobe Premiere Pro for the night lapses and time lapses because it's super easy to do in there. Now you can use other video editing software like DaVinci Resolve if you want a free one. You can do iMovie, Final Cut Pro, any of those. But I recommend using Premiere Pro because I find that Premiere Pro is the easiest software to use for night lapses. And if you're not sure if it's right for you, I definitely encourage you to do a trial with Premiere Pro to see if you like it. Premiere Pro does have a bit of a learning curve, but I still think it's one of the easiest video editing softwares to use once you get the hang of it. So we're gonna create a new project and I'm going to call this Night Lapse One. And we're gonna navigate to our location and we are gonna select we're gonna to go to desktop, we're gonna select Night Lapse 1, we're gonna click Choose. Then we're gonna click Create. Now that our project's created, first thing we wanna do is we wanna go up here to File, New, 
and sequence. We want to do a 29.97 because that's going to be the default for the night lapse with those photos. And we want to make sure it's 3840 by 2160 because that is 4K. And then all of these other settings we pretty much can leave alone down here. You're going to click OK. And then next thing we want to do is we want to go up here to File and we want to do Import. And then we want to navigate, make sure it's in our Night Lapse 1 folder. We want to select Edited. And so here is a key setting to make sure you do properly. You want to click the first photo, but then you want to click down here under Options. And you want to select Image Sequence. And what Premiere Pro is going to do is it's going to auto-detect. It's a time lapse and it's going to import all of these photos in order in one file. We're going to click Import. And there are the photos right there. As you can see, they're in a single file, which is super easy to work with. So we just drag this here onto the timeline and it's going to tell you it doesn't match the sequence settings. And that's because the photos are a different resolution than the 3840 by 2160. So for now, click keep existing settings. And so as you can see, this is very zoomed in. So what we want to do for the scale is we want to go back to 69. When you select 69, that's going to fit it perfectly with the sideways resolution, but then you're going to have some up and down resolution to work with. I can go all the way to there before I get the black bar. Then I can go all the way down here before I get the black bar. So generally what I recommend is I recommend putting it at a scale of 69 there. And then down here at the bottom, you can go to approximately 725 before it shows the black bars. So in this case, I want to leave a little bit of that tree at the top because that's our reference point to see the sky pivoting, but I don't want to have a lot of the tree. So I'm going to leave about this right here, which in this case is 984. Depending on what you have and where your subject is, you might need to drag a little bit up and down, but you won't have to drag side to side with 69 if you select that because 69 is exactly the proper resolution for side to side. But since photos are shot in 4x3 resolution, you have more to work with at the top and the bottom. So once you've gotten it positioned the way you like it, you want to go up here to Sequence, you want to render into Out. We're going to let this file render. It's going to give us that nice smooth playback once we've rendered it. And then we're going to let it finish rendering here. All right, so now that the rendering is finished, we want to take a look here. Just make sure everything looks good. And of course, if you want to add some music from your favorite content provider for music, feel free to do that. So this looks really good. We've got those low level clouds going over and then the stars rotating in the background. Love how it looks. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go up here and we're going to export. So we're going to go file, export, media. And what we want to do is we want to give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it Night Lapse one and we want to keep the format h.264 under video we want to click match source we want to render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality and then down here for the bitrate encoding we want to do vbr2 pass and we want to do our target bitrate and our maximum bitrate also at 50 and then we're going to click export right here and the video is going to proceed to export and when it's done you're going to have your finished night lapse on your computer in a .mp4 format and finally, I'm going to show you how to edit a night lapse that was shot in video mode. Now, like I mentioned before, when I was doing the settings, I highly recommend doing night lapse in photo mode if you want the very best results. You can do it in video mode, but you're going to have a lot less editing flexibility. So what you want to do here is you want to open your video editor. In this case, I'm going to show you on Adobe Premiere Pro. But again, if you're using a different video editor, you can follow along. A lot of these settings will still be the same. They're going to be very basic for how to edit a video night lapse. So we're going to open Premiere Pro here and we're going to go to new project. And we're going to choose location. We're going to choose night lapse one. And we're going to give it a project name. We're going to call it video night lapse one. I'm going to click create. We're going to do file new sequence. We're going to go over here to settings and we're going to make sure that it's 3840 by 2160. And we're going to set this to 29.97. We're going to hit OK. And now we're going to import 
the video mode sample that I shot for a night lapse, which on my desktop, that's called GX015978. We're gonna click import. And it's imported right here. We're gonna drag it to the timeline. Now in this case, it's 4K 16 by nine, so we don't have to do any dragging around. It's all set, it's already there. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. It doesn't show a lot of features. So we wanna go over here to Lumetri Color. And the first thing we wanna start with is this basic correction. So what we wanna do is we wanna add some exposure. It's gonna help bring out some of the details. So in this case, I'm gonna drag it up quite a ways. I'm gonna do something around two right here. Contrast, we can mess around with that a little bit as well. If you bring it down too much, it gets pretty noisy. If you bring it up too much, it's gonna take away a lot of the detail. So I recommend generally having it pretty close to zero, up just a little bit. Highlights, you wanna bring that up slightly to bring out some more of the detail. That's preserved there. But again, when you bring them up, you start to see a lot of noise like in this area and it doesn't look good. So you don't wanna to go too high there. So I'm gonna leave those right around 30 for now. Shadows, you wanna bring those up a little bit too. But we don't wanna bring those up too much. So in this case, I'm gonna bring it up to about, about 10 there. Whites, I recommend bringing up ever so slightly. In blacks, I don't recommend doing any changes on this. I recommend leaving that at zero. So under creative, if you click there, you have a few more options. You can add a little bit more sharpness to it, but I don't recommend adding too much because it'll quickly get pretty noisy here. And saturation, if you want to add a little bit, since we did film it in flat, you can add a little bit of color there. And that is about it when it comes to editing a night lapse in video mode. It definitely looks better than when we first imported it. There's a lot more detail there with the stars and a lot more of them show than did. But like I said before, with video mode, it's gonna mainly be the brightest features that you see in the sky. You can only bring it up so much just because of the noise that you're gonna get. But if we take a look at it there, it still looks pretty cool. Like I like that one. Uh, the clouds look pretty neat there. The noise isn't so bad that it's not still a good product. And that's pretty neat seeing the stars rotate through the sky there. And every once in a while the cloud going through. So I still like that. It's good results and it still looks good in a project. It's just not as detailed and as refined as the photo mode. And of course something else you can do here. If you wanted a quick night lapse that you can just use in a project to show the progression of time. You can also change the speed, so you could put this up to like 500%, and it's gonna make it into an eight second night lapse. So if we play it now, it's gonna go really fast. So yeah, you have a lot of options there too. Uh, for video night lapses, generally, they're gonna be ones that you wanna do fairly quickly, most likely in your project. You probably don't want like a 30 second night lapse. So the video mode is great for that if you don't need the quality to be the very best. It's great if you wanna put it in a project to show the progression of time. If you wanna show sunset to sunrise, an eight second night lapse in your project can be perfect. That's what I recommend video mode for. But if you want it to look really, really good, use photo mode. And then just like with the photo mode night lapse, we're gonna go up here to export. We're gonna click media and we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it video night lapse one. We're gonna click on video here, click match source, go down to more, select render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality. Go down here to bitrate encoding, select VBR two pass and put the target bitrate to 50 and the maximum bitrate to 50 and then click export. And Premiere Pro is going to export your project and you're gonna be good to go. So there you go, and there you have it. That is my 100% A to Z complete guide on how to create amazing night lapses on your GoPro action camera. You are now equipped with all you need to know in order to create amazing GoPro night lapses. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.